Okay, today we're going to look back and think about something we did a while back. Uh, remember the articles you wrote on the Revolutionary War? Remember how some of you wrote on the Boston Tea Party and some of you wrote on, on uh, some of the battles of the war or some of the other activities of the war? We're going to think back on those things to learn a little bit more. When you read fiction or nonfiction, you get your own ideas about your what you read, even when you're reading research. Whether you imagine a scene, what the scene looks like or imagine you are a character, you create your own point of view. You bring what you know and feel into the reading. Dealing with history should be the same way. We attach meaning to things as we read or experience based upon our point of view. Our goal today is to realize that writers develop their own ideas about history based on what they read and find when they do research. When you do research, you don't just take it and wrote it, write it down in different words. You interact with it and bring yourself into the experience. When students read history books, they have a lot of their own ideas. But too many times those ideas are ignored and only dates and hard facts are recorded and presented in your research projects. I'm going to read you a text and demonstrate how thoughts go across my mind as I read. And I might jot them, these thoughts down in the margins so I won't forget them. So here I go. I'm, I'm going to reread a text that you already know, letting my thoughts flash across my mind. Notice when I jot down my ideas, even more than the information in the margins as I read, I jot quickly, briefly, and then move on. I don't linger on any one thought, but try to catch a bunch of them. I'm going to read from Josh Gregory's The Revolutionary War. Here I go. In 1774, Parliament began passing a series of laws that became known as the Intolerable Acts. In the margin, I might jot down something that, like, they must have been really awful to be called intolerable, because that word means people couldn't stand them. Then I go ahead and read. These acts were designed to punish Massachusetts for destroying millions of dollars worth of property. I might jot in the margin. One act was laws to punish the entire state? Seems strict. Then I go ahead and read. Parliament then ordered Boston Harbor to be closed until the colonists paid for the tea they had destroyed. I might jot in the margin. That meant that ships couldn't leave or enter either. Another punishment. I go on and read. British General Thomas Gage was named governor of Massachusetts. It became illegal for the colonists to hold town meetings or elect their own officials without permission from the British. And alongside this, I might write a third punishment. Are the British going too far? I bet the colonists named those acts intolerable, not the British. Okay, writers, did you see me talking back to the text? People refer to this as annotating the text. And what I will show you later is that many of these jottings can be thought of as seed ideas and grown into full-blown entries in your writer's notebooks that can later be put into your books. Sometimes these jottings might even turn into whole chapters. Our goal today is to realize that writers develop their own ideas about history based on what they read and find when they do research. So again, what I just did was annotating the text. Many of the ideas you get when you read and research can, can, can become important enough to write down and can be developed into an important part of your final writing piece. These little notes that come to mind are too important to let go, too important to lose. So when you get your weekly reader, your instructor will tell you which parts to read. Go through and silently read to yourself. When you come to something that you think is an interesting thought, write it down on a sticky note, even if you're not sure it's an important idea. In a few minutes, you'll get to share your ideas with your partner and then with the whole class. Now, put what you learned today into practice. Whatever you write down may turn into something you may want to use later. I can't wait to see your sticky notes with interesting ideas on them.